initial IRS position was set forth in 2014, and they decided at that time that they would not treat cryptocurrencies as fiat. They would not treat it as a currency. They decided to treat cryptocurrencies as a commodity. That creates substantial opportunities in a down market. Uh, and the reason why it does is that a lot of the rules that apply to securities transactions do not apply to crypto. For example, a loan of a crypto asset could very well trigger gain or loss. As you point out, the markets are not doing quite so well these days. So a loan of a cryptocurrency uh, could create an opportunity to recognize a current loss on that, com that, that, that position. Similarly, uh, it's unlikely that the wash sale rules currently apply. The wash sale rules prevent you from recognizing a loss if within what's known as the wash sale period, which is the 61-day period beginning 30 days before you dispose of the currency, that uh, you're not allowed to recognize the loss. Since the wash sale rules are unlikely to apply to crypto, uh, entering, entering into a wash sale transaction uh, that is likely to give rise to a usable loss. For the non-U.S. investors, the fact that crypto is treated as a commodity creates an opportunity to be able to trade it in the United States without being subject to tax. There's a very famous safe harbor known as the 864B2 Commodities Trading Safe Harbor. It allows you to trade in the U.S. and not be subject to U.S. tax. It's highly likely that that exception applies to non-U.S. investors who trade through U.S. exchanges. So the fact that the IRS has told us that crypto is a commodity creates a lot of opportunity for both loss recognition, certainty, and for non-U.S. investors. Turns out, I uh, decided not to report crypto transactions uh, because the transactions were taking place abroad. The Internal Revenue Service has updated uh, the form uh, that allows people to come forward and correct prior filing mistakes to in specifically include information on crypto trading. By coming forward proactively before the Internal Revenue Service comes to a taxpayer, uh, they can uh, mitigate or avoid a substantial amount of penalties. Furthermore, it's always a good idea, when, for, at least at this point, for crypto investing to file a Form 8935. That form uh, will enable you to disclose all of your positions uh, <clears throat> in a way that is tax uh, compliant with the Internal Revenue Service rules. There's currently a bipartisan bill that's pending in Congress, which unfortunately uh, proposed by Senator Gillibrand of New York, which has a very, very low likely of passage. But what it does offer us is an insight into congressional thinking about the approaches that they tend on taking. I can tell you this on the tax side, that uh, it, it would specifically provide that the trading safe harbor for non-U.S. persons applies. It would provide that staking and other mining activities are not currently taxable in direct contravention of the existing IRS position. And it also contains a slew of regulatory oversight rules, which would be uh, provide a lot of certainty to the market. And I think knock out a lot of bad players and turn crypto into an even more well-recognized and investable asset class. Uh, legislation's already been enacted on the tax side that expands all of the reporting rules applicable to securities and other types of well-recognized exchange transactions to crypto. It's going to be sort of a big lift for the exchanges to be able to get on board, but with the existing regulatory and statutory scheme in effect, I think we're going to be looking at um, uh, an asset class that has been much more mainstream. The second question you asked me is much more personal. What do I think is going to happen with the asset class generally? I think we're going to continue to see fallout. I think it's going to knock out some of the bad actors. I think that uh, the tokenization of a significant number of commodity transactions is likely to continue to move forward. That the current uh, scheme that we have of T plus one or T plus two trade settlement is going to, people are going to recognize that that's uh, sort of an historical acronym. And once you move to a tokenization of t transactions and have instantaneous settlement, that people, that even the stakeholders in the current system are going to recognize the advantages over the long term.